Well, th uh, welcome to the Senior Center. We're going to do a quick little, uh, well, not, I shouldn't say too quick. This is probably going to be about a good hour because these ingredients do require some, some time and we wanted to actually prepare this with you. But we're making a little bit of a healthy, kind of thinking about spring already, even though it's uh, late January. Uh, and what we're going to do for some nice recipes that we can have during spring. So I'm not sure if you're familiar with quinoa. Uh, quinoa is an ancient grain. Uh, really packed with protein. Uh, it has uh, tons of tons of tons of great great benefits to, for you and lots of good fiber. So quinoa actually has more protein by the pound than red red meat. So if you wanted to go on a, a low 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 a high protein diet and not have to consume a lot of red meat, quinoa would be very good. So we're gonna we're gonna pair up the quinoa because quinoa like some rices or grains take on a lot of the ingredients that you put into it. So we're going to fill it up with lots of herbs and vegetables to give it lots of great flavor. And then we're going to serve it with some uh, seared shrimp and some uh, griddled steak. Uh, and we're going to mix it all together so you can have a nice quinoa, uh, healthy quinoa, uh, shrimp and steak bowl. All right? Mm -hmm. So we'll start with the quinoa. The quinoa and the sweet potatoes are going to probably take the longest. So people like rice, like brown rice. Quinoa is about one and a half cups of liquid to one cup of the dry. So this is two cups, uh, and I have, so I have four cups here. So what I did was I did, uh, four, I did six cups of water, a little salt uh, in that water. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put it, and you, you can take the quinoa and put it right into the salted water. So it's a covered pot, you're fine. I won't burn anyone, I promise. So I'm going to pour the quinoa right in there. So we have lots of quinoa. And what happens is, and we'll stir that a little bit. We're going to add a little more salt. I'm going to add a little salt and a little bit of olive oil. Pardon me? It's going gonna, it's gonna to absorb all the liquid. But I'm not gonna, I'm, I'm gonna turn it off in a second. I'm just gonna let it cook for a little bit. And I'm gonna turn off the water. I'm gonna put it on a really low simmer. Yeah, similar to a couscous. Couscous, couscous is more like uh, wheat. Quinoa is a, it's, a, its own grain. So quinoa is like almost like a berry, even though it's much smaller. So it's, it's a different type of grain. Uh, so what happens is, it's almost like wheat germ, where it actually, blo it, it blooms and this, it, it kind of has like a tail, it kind of pops out. So you'll see it, what it's gonna do is it's gonna absorb the liquid and it's gonna kind of bloom. So each little quinoa grain is gonna probably go, grow about four to five times its size. So I'm just gonna let that sit and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn it off in about five minutes and then forget about it for another 10. And then what we'll do is we'll, we'll fluff it up. And, and I like to eat my quinoa cold or room temperature. So I'll let it chill or I'll let it just sit room temperature while we're making the rest of the items because I don't like a hot quinoa dish, I like a cold quinoa dish. Great in the summer, great on salads. You can actually make this quinoa and put it in the cooler and if you're having a salad a couple days later, sprinkle some on top of your salad and it just gives it a nice bite. All right, so then we have our sweet potatoes and our kale. So I pre-cut some sweet potatoes but I wanted to show you how I did these. So this is two large sweet potatoes or yams, whatever you may call them. I washed them off, made sure there was no dirt and debris on them. And then I just cut off the edges so it's a little easier to hold. You don't want, when, you ha when you're cutting on a cutting board, you don't want things to wobble around. So you can cut the top and the bottom like that so it's nice and easy to hold. Or you can cut one side so you get a flat edge and you can kind of keep it like that where it's not going to roll around on you. Those are, you, know, you don't want to cut yourself. So I'm just going to cut large strips. Now these are big, so they are a little harder to cut, but I've been doing this a little bit, so I'm pretty good. I don't plan on going to the hospital today either. All right? And then what I'll do is I'll line these up, just back in line, and I'm gonna cut them into long planks. So you don't have to skin them. You don't have to. I, I prefer the skin on. Some people don't, and it depends. That's more fiber. I think it adds flavor. I'm gonna roast it so it's, it's perfectly fine. If you were gonna make uh, sweet potato french fries, these would be good like that. So you got some nice large planks. You can roast them in the pan and or fry them. All right, sweet, fried sweet potatoes are great. They add natural sugar. 
and then I'm just going to dice them. So that's how I'm cutting the sweet potato. Again, if you like, if you don't like the skin, you can peel the skin. So that's how I'll cut the sweet potato. I already cut plenty. I don't want to overcrowd the pan. A lot of people ask, when you, when you cook roasted, when you roast vegetables, if you put them in a pan like this, you should only have really one layer. Because if you put two, three layers on top of it, so. If you put too many layers, it's not going to roast. It's going to steam. Okay? So instead of getting nice caramelization, you're going to get all hot air, and it'll, it'll kind of mash. So you're not going to get that extra caramelization. So simple as this, hot oven. We're just going to get a little olive oil. So also using some, some nice oils. A little salt and pepper. I'm just going to mix that around. All right. So we got a nice good layer in the pan. And we're going to put these in the oven for about 15 minutes. 475. I always use high heat. I fight with my sister about this. I go over her house, she's got like 375. I said, I don't think I've ever used 375. Now, my wife who bakes cakes, yeah, 350, 325. When you're cooking meats and vegetables, turn the heat up. Yeah, 450, 425, it's okay. Your house is not going to burn down, all right? And we'll just put this right in the oven. So this is a convection oven. A convection oven means that the air is blowing around in it, which is great, and that's where you get that's why in restaurants you get like sear on the outside of your food because they all have those ovens that the air moves around rather than a still oven where just the air comes up and it just kind of stays there. Uh, the, the heat comes up, so it's still. It's not, the air is not moving, so the, the, the food is, is kind of cooking all at this like medium pace. All right, so here's where I need some help. We need you to pick some kale, okay? So feel free to gather around, come on over here. So kale, I washed it. Kale's great, you can eat it completely raw like this. You can cut it up and put it in the salad, but I'm gonna cook some of it, but uh, washing it, make sure it's not sandy, because sometimes it will have some sand. And uh, all you have to do is, is you take the stem, and you can peel, peel, peel it off, and then put it right in that pan there. And then throw this away. Yes. 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 So while you're doing that, you can see the quinoa is starting to bloom. And I'm just going to turn off the heat now. We'll, we'll show the TV uh, what it looks like, too. So you see it's starting to come open. And I'm just gonna, now I'm just going to shut it off. But I'll show you real quick a quinoa grain so you can see. Kind of reminds me of like wheat germ. If that's even a thing anymore. <laughs> but you see the quinoa grain starts to open up. And it, its, tail, it, a it, its tail comes out. That's what they call it. And it kind of pulls out. All right. But it's just, it's, it's a nice grain, it's great fiber, it, and like I said, it really just takes on what you put into it. So, you know, if you like it, I'm, we're going to make a citrus vinaigrette. If you like it lemony, you're going to make it, make it citrus vinaigrette. If you like a lot of heat, put something hot in there, uh, some chilies. If you like something creamy, something, you know, creamy dressing, uh, whatever you like. So that's, you know, that's how I, I, I tend to enjoy it. So great, great job on that. We'll take that out. Put that bowl behind you. Thank you very much. Wow, you, what are you guys doing tomorrow? I need, I need some help for a big party. <laughs> this was good. So this is going to cook pretty quickly. So what we'll do is we'll just, we'll put this, uh, sprinkle a little olive oil. I'm going to roast this up. And because when you were pulling it, it was kind of ripping and tearing, I don't even have to worry about, I don't even have to worry about cutting it. As I mix it into the salad, it's going to continue to pull apart and tear. So I'm just going to put a little bit of oil, a little salt and pepper, and just a little lemon zest here. Probably not been used for a long time. Uh, we, we, we know, 
We had Annie. Annie came through and washed everything up really nicely. And the lemon zest goes a long way. One thing about lemon zest, do you use lemon zest at home? Use a zester. Obviously a microplane works really well, but this, yeah. this zester works. This grater works fine. A box grater does the trick. And I'm going to put some fresh lemon on it when it's time to um, some fresh lemon juice when it comes out. But that'll, that'll roast up nicely. All right, smells good. One thing about zesting a lemon is just go till where it's pale. You don't want to get all the way deep into the white because the pith, it gets really bitter. So you just can get the outside edges. If you look really closely, when you like score a lemon, you'll see, you'll see it like sprays. That's the lemon oil, right? So you're getting all that nice lemon oil in there too. And that's why you don't do it near your face because you get some lemon oil in the eye, you're gonna know it, right? You won't forget that. So it's really, that's why it smells so good. That's why when you put it in your tea, it, it helps flavor that tea. But lemon is such a great ingredient. So we'll put this in for just about four or five minutes, gonna wilt it up. So someone needs to keep a timer on their head, because I'll forget. I've been known to burn a few things. <laughs> Official timer? All right. So we'll start on the shrimp and the, the, the beef. Turn these pans up. And we're just going to get a little marinade on them. We have a bowl here. So this is where you can help me. In you're going to judge whether or not how much, how much you want. Oh, well, actually, we're going to do the tomatoes first, too. So some blistered tomatoes. Simple, simple again. I love these type, type tomatoes. You don't have to cut them at all. They come clean. They, they don't have any, um, they don't have any, uh, they don't have big seeds. And they're really, really sweet and flavorful. So I'm going to take a little garlic here. Sorry. And again, like I said, all the flavor you're adding is going to really incorporate into the salad. So some thinly sliced garlic. I'm going to roast that up in the pan with these, these cherry tomatoes or grape tomatoes. A little more salt. Notice like the ingredients. If you, use, if you use good ingredients, you don't need to add too many different seasonings. You don't need to add all these spices, all those spices are great. But a lot of what I use is just really nice, refreshing ingredients. Turn them around. And we're going to cook those until they start to blister as well. So these will go in. We got about, the kale is looking great. We probably got about, what do you say, one, one and a half more minutes? What do you, how much more time we got? What do you think? All right. A couple more minutes? Great. So shrimp. Shrimp comes in many ways, shapes, and forms. Everyone knows the small shrimp, there's big shrimp, there's every type of shrimp in between. This is a 1620 shrimp. Uh, when I say 1620, that means there's 16 to 20 of these in a pound, okay? 15, uh, 21, 25, so, you know, or, or, or bigger, uh, whatever. So these here, uh, they come a lot, you can get them peeled and deveined, so that means they've already been cleaned, and then the tail on. So I like to buy them that way. I also like to buy uh, more of a tiger shrimp, or because they're usually a little bit more firm. You know, some, of the, some shrimps can be soft, some shrimps can be a little bit more firm. I like a tiger shrimp, and I also like to buy a chemical-free shrimp. So a lot of shrimp farms, they'll pump lots of chemicals into their, their product to make them bigger. So tiger shrimp? Yeah, black tiger. Usually Vietnamese shrimp as well, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of stuff like that. Most of the shrimp we get is coming from uh, that, that area of the world. Um, and just keep an eye on what you get. But I, I do. I buy them frozen. I don't have a problem with it. Like I said, most of the stuff you're going to get, unless you get Maine fresh shrimp or you get something from the Gulf, you're, you're going to get it from Indonesia, you're going to get it from uh, Vietnam, or you're going to get it from somewhere in Southeast America um, where, where it's going to have to be frozen to get up here. So um, you think about that. So, and it's okay. As long as you buy a good quality product that has good, uh, that has, uh, good reviews, you're going to be in good shape. So I'll just, peel, I'll just pinch and peel the, 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 the tail off because we're going to cook that. Oh, those are tomatoes. Great. That's the high heat. So we're going to take the shrimp in the bowl. And then I got some Calabrian chili. Oh, it's going to be really nice. So 
So I'm not going to put, do you like a lot of spice? You OK? A little bit. This is, this is going to get kind of, uh, it's not going to overpower it because there's going to be so many other ingredients. So we're going to put just a little Calabrian pepper, all right? It was just a little, all right? So we'll let that sit there. We'll toss it around and we'll let it sit for a second. We'll add some of that lemon. And we're just going to let that sit because we're going to sear that shrimp. We'll add, a little, we'll add a little fresh, we'll add a little fresh herbs too. Check on these. There we go. Smoky, that's good. All right. So you see how quickly we started the blister here? Almost there. The kale is good. Crispy kale. That's nice. That's what you want. All that roasting is going to give a nice, nice flavor. So we're just going to set that aside. We can put that over here. The quinoa is moving and shaking. It's doing great. Tomatoes are almost done. And the sweet potatoes are, I'd say you need about five more minutes. OK? So we're making really good, really good time. You got your shrimp marinating. You got your beef. All I did was, when I'm making something like this, I, I don't have, you don't have to use an expensive cut of meat. Like I wouldn't buy filet. I wouldn't buy, I wouldn't buy like a really uh, expensive strip steak. This is uh, top round sirloin. So it's usually, on, honestly, some people call it lemon broil, whatever it may be. It's usually the cheaper cut of meat. But if you slice it on the, on, against the grain and, you, and you're going to cut it up and make, make a nice little marinade, it's going to cook up and it's going to do exactly what you want. So we're going to do a little bit of that Calabrian chili. But I'm going to give it a little bit of a twist. A fre some fresh cilantro in here. So who likes cilantro? Parsley. That's parsley. That's cilantro. No, Smell the difference. I'll tell you what. So some people say cilantro yeah. tastes like dish soap. It's, a, it's, it's like a genetic trait. Yeah. I love it. It's a unique flavor. Yeah. It goes really well in fresh foods. Do you like it? A little bit, yeah. Cilantro is very bright. <laughs> She's going to like it in this dish. I'm glad, she, but she tried. But you know what? But she tried. But that's great. So cilantro is fantastic. It's got a unique flavor. We're just going to put a little in this, in this beef, almost like, um, like a chimichurri uh, kind of flavor that's going to get added to it. Uh, usually, a, you know, cilantro pesto is very similar to a chimichurri. Parsley is fantastic. We're going to add a lot of parsley into our quinoa. So we'll do that. We'll add a little bit of sh uh, shallot as well. Shallots are a garlicky onion. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. So chicken, pork, any, any meat, any lean meat you like, you know, obviously. Pork's, pork's, um, pork's delicious. Chicken, I would, I would have no problem using uh, chicken breast or, or chicken thighs. So we just cut up some shallots. Shallots are um, kind of a sweet onion, uh, but a little bit, a little bit has that garlicky flavor as well. And then nice olive oil. I brought you the best. All right, we'll let that sit. So we got. Everything. Oh, look at that. I made a mess. You can just brush that. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Bob's the best. All right, so pan's getting hot, hopefully. We don't know about these senior service center ovens. We'll see. Tomatoes, done. Perfect. Blistered tomatoes. All right. Beautiful. We'll put these over here. And let's check the quinoa because we might want to put that in the cooler now. So you have the quinoa here. See it kind of absorbed all that liquid? It's fully cooked. I'm going to fluff it up and I'm going to cool it down. Okay? So let's see if we have a, we're going to wash that big pot. 
that, that one, uh, that one's clean? Yeah. I'll give it a quick rinse. We had the, we had the clean kale in there. What's that? Oh, the cilantro, gotcha. Why'd you volunteer? She's gonna have that cilantro. So one thing cilantro doesn't go well with is wine. Wine and cilantro just don't seem to find a good match. They're really hard. It's really hard to match a good wine with cilantro. And a lot of, a lot of beverage people always tell me that. They get nervous, they're like, you know. Now can you add that to anything? Oh my God, yeah, I love it. So you can make, if, like, it's a great rice substitute. It's, it's, it's a really good rice substitute. It's a little healthier um, because it's not gonna be, it's, it's, it's very, very healthy. All right, so we're gonna cool this down. We're gonna, so it doesn't stick together too much. We're gonna add a little, a little more salt. We're just gonna cool it down in the refrigerator. We'll get it nice and try and chill it. I should get it up by the fan. The sweet potatoes should be good. See here? All those beautiful sweet potatoes roasted in great flavor. So this is all gonna set aside and we make our salad, we're gonna mix everything together and we're gonna have such a good meal. All right? Actually, be, well, let's check on this. I want it to cool down a little bit so that when we mix everything, it just doesn't wilt at all. So I'll stir it around a little bit more to really get the, cool, the, chill, the heat out of it. But it's gonna, this will cool down so quick. I love it in the summer. So what I like to do is I like to make the quinoa, cool it down, and then when I bring it, so like anything, if you have tomatoes, do you like tomatoes ice cold out of the refrigerator, you like them kind of room temperature? So I like to let them sit out a little bit, and then so that they, uh, they, they, that flavor gets in, opens up a little bit more. So I'll, pull it, I'll make the salad, and I'll pull it out a, about a half hour before I serve it, so it kind of just it warms up a little bit. All right? So... We're gonna in this uh, in in this here. We're also gonna add a little green onion, also known as scallions. And we're gonna put some chopped spinach in this uh, quinoa as well. but we're gonna make a little bit of a dressing. So, some green onion. Now, can you use uh, chives? Absolutely, yeah. You can, use, uh, you can use red onion, you can use green onion. I like the green. Um, let me grab those gloves. You get the gloves behind you, Bob? There we go. Just wanna use the gloves so I can squeeze some lemon. I'm just going to squeeze these guys. So everyone knows how to squeeze a lemon, right? I mean, you can buy those fancy dancy tools, you know, they're nice. But if you just roll them, if they're not ice cold, then they're going to, then they, they're going to, um, more juice will come out. And I just keep my hand there to catch the seeds. And then I'll just put them aside. Same thing. And if you want, you know, if you want to get a little extra fancy, you can um, use a fork to kind of, mash around the inside of the lemon, all right? So just a little bit more. I'm gonna do three, I'm gonna do three, well, there's a lot of quinoa, but let's see. I'll show you, I'm gonna make a small batch and I'm gonna make a big batch because I know that we're all gonna wanna try that. You can buy fresh squeezed lemon juice too, you know? I don't like the, um, you know that green bottle, or the, that. I think it's too, it's too tart. It's like, a, it's like a fake lemon, it's like citric acid. I don't like that. I like that if you're making lemonade, you know, in a drink, but not in fresh food. It just doesn't do it for me, you know, so. I'm just gonna do three lemons. And we'll add the olive oil after, okay? So, let's cook some shrimp and some steak. So hot pan, 
You can feel it, it's nice and hot. We're gonna add a little bit of that olive oil and just add a little bit of that sugar. See that nice sear? Don't want to overcrowd the pan. Same thing with the steak. Hot pan. This is a grill, grill pan. That marinated steak. Calabrian chili is going to get you a little bit. We'll add a little more steak. And that's going to cook really quick. See the shrimp, how quick, quickly it's going to cook? It doesn't take much. All right? So I'm just moving around the steak. So in the, in the winter, it's, this is going to emulate a grill. And if you don't want to go outside, these grill pans work really good. You don't have to use a grill pan. You can use a saute pan. All right? Just moving around. Depends, and it, how do you like it cooked? you like it cooked a little, little, little more, a little bit less? It's obviously sliced, so it's not going to really cook, it's not going to um, really allow to be cooked medium rare. And the shrimp, of course, you're going to cook shrimp through, all right? I just want to show you one or two, and then we're going to make a big batch for all of us. It's in the quinoa, that's why, that's where it is. So quinoa is still cooling, but we're gonna get we'll get it pretty good here. What's it? Avocado. Oh, that's the garnish. So I'm gonna pretend. Let's pretend we're at Pat's restaurant or your restaurant, and we're just making you know, for our for, you know one 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 customer, one guest comes in. So we have this is where we have all our mise en place, all set aside. Absolutely, yeah. I would so that those bags, those bags make a good amount. Um, there we go. Those bags make a good amount. So one bag is going to be enough for a while. Um, you know, at your house, buy one bag at a time. They sell that right at Market Basket or gro the grocery store you choose. All right. Shrimp's cooked. Hope you make it. So we got our quinoa in a nice bowl. We're going to take some of that fresh spinach. Just washed, clean, fresh spinach. You can cut it. You can chop it with your hand. You can cut it with a knife. And that's going to build some volume in the bowl. All right. Fresh parsley. Make sure it's clean. You don't want any sand in there. I won't add any more Calabrian chili because I don't want to kill you guys, you know? I, I still love you. And we're going to add a little bit of that chive, I'm sorry, that uh, green onion and lemon juice. And it's going to emulate a vinaigrette, so the oil is going to add, you know, create that too. Toss it around. Add a little bit of salt and pepper. Should I add more salt? I'm not going to add any cilantro to this, all right? I noticed that that wasn't a fan favorite, but it's quite all right. Then. I'm going to go and grab all the beautiful ingredients that are going to make this dish, right? So we got some roasted sweet potatoes. And this is, this is if we were making one or two orders, right? Some nice charred up kale. Some of those garlicky tomatoes that are all blistered. Everything, all fresh. And we, we made all of that for a lot of people in a very reasonable, reasonable period of time. That lemon citrusy vinaigrette, you can break up the kale a little bit more. And then we're just gonna put some on a plate here. Would that be a meal or a side dish? I think this would be a great meal, right? Wouldn't you love having this? Having this for a lunch or a dinner, especially if you're on that 
that exercise kick. And we're going to finish it with one of my favorite ingredients. This is going to add some creaminess, you know, without adding a lot of fat. And so avocados, try and pick them. You try and feel them so that they're just, just soft enough but not too soft. You can just push them a little bit. You push them too much, they're going to be too, too, too ripe. And then you can cut them in half. When you cut them in half like I just did, nice and easy. Don't slam the knife through because you'll go right to your hand. Just catch that knob like that. So you see, I just caught it and turn it. and It'll come out, OK? If you don't feel comfortable doing that, don't do it. Don't worry about it, all right? Grow an avocado tree if you want. And then I'll just scoop out the avocado in slices like this, and I'll shingle them over the top. Or if you want to get even fancier, you can cut cube, you can slice it this way and do, you can, if you're making guacamole, this is a good trick, you can cut them into cubes, slices each way. And you can scoop out all the cubes, just like that. So you see how it all comes out cubed? See that? Now the avocado's all cubed up. I love avocados. I don't know if you like them. They're delicious. And then last but not least, just a little lime. A little squeeze over the top. And I won't put cilantro. <laughs> All right? I would typically put a little cilantro. And that is your quinoa, healthy quinoa, steak and shrimp bowl. All right? Good? Make, it, make a little bit more. We're going to make a lot more. So I want you guys to try a little bit of this. I'm going to make a big one, and we have a lot more to eat. So let's do that.